Hi everybody, Steph here. Now, what I'm going to do for you today, um, we're going to show you how to, well, show you the basics of actually servicing this particular pen. Um, this is a Swan um, Calligraph pen from around about the 1950s. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the basics of actually servicing it. Now, some of the procedures I've actually already shown you on other videos. Um, but there's a couple of points with this particular pen, pen which um, as I go along I'll point out to you that I think, um, well I think are quite important and what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll mention them as I, as I actually go along. So let's try and keep it nice and, well, as short as possible. So, what we, well, again, some of the things I've actually already done. I've polished the pen, I've removed scratches. Um, it's all been cleaned internally. But um, basically, once you get the pen, undo the cap, then what you'll need to do is apply heat, direct your heat around about here where the threads are. Then once you've applied heat, um, get a piece of rubber. This is my bike inner tube. Uh, as you can see, I've used this also uh, to make my own um, rubber seals. But once you've heated it in this particular area, get, get your rubber, grip the section, and just simply, well, says he, simply turn it like so. Now, let's put the rubber to one side. As I say, what I've already done, I've already done some of these procedures, so um, you'll have to bear with me. Then, what I'd actually do then is I actually cover the section with um, insulating tape. I use this insulating tape here. Um, I wrap it around the section. I then pop this into the ultrasonic cleaner um, until it cleans all the ink off the nib and the section inside. And then what you'll need to do is pop this onto your uh, your nib block or whatever you actually do, and knock the feed from from the top here and knock the feed and the nib out. Now, as I say, I've already done that. It's all been cleaned. So with a bit of luck and a little bit of pressure. There we go. I can actually pull it all out like so. There you go. So we've got the section, we've got the feed, we've got the nib. Again, they've all already been cleaned, but I'm just trying to show you what you need to do. So once you've done that, pop it to one side. Um, once you've cleaned that in the ultrasonic cleaner, I take them out, I take this section of the nib and then pop them back into the cleaner again to give them a thorough clean um, inside as well. Now, what you need to do then is what you'll find in most circumstances on the sack nipple here, you'll find you've still got remnants of the old sack. What I use is just a simple um, little pen knife and just very carefully I actually sort of scratch off, if you like, all the remnants of the old sack on the nipple there. So clean it off till it's nice and clean like so. Now, another th well, one of the reasons I wanted to show you this particular pen is that if we actually do this, what you'll see inside is this is this pressure bar here. Okay. Now, this particular pen is a leverless pen. I believe they also made them with a lever. These particular models, um, but as you can see, this is a leverless one. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to show you this pen, if you look to the top there, you've got this knurled. Uh, knob to the top there and if we actually turn it okay you'll see it comes out slightly again the reason I wanted to show you there's some slight confusion with some people the way this pen actually works because as we said what we've got is a pressure bar in this particular one and how it works is the pressure go pressure bar goes inside once you unscrew the pressure bar, uh, sorry, the knob there, um, it pushes it up slightly, and in effect, what it actually does, it pushes on the pressure bar like so, and in effect, that presses against the sack and allows you to fill the pen with ink. Now, again, some people are confused because if I show you this particular pen, this is a Swan Leaveless. Um, well, this is a 1060, you can see it's slightly bigger. But if you look at the end there, and if I unscrew the knob to this particular one there, they look very, very similar. In fact, pretty well identical. Now, I'm actually working on this pen, so there's no, there's no nib, etc. Now, the difference being on this pen, as opposed to the calligraphy one, 
or the calligraph one is this pen as you turn this knob here I don't know if we can actually show it you inside whether you'll be able to see it but in effect what you have inside this particular pen is a bar that when you turn this knob the bar actually turns inside and grips the sack inside and in effect it actually well if you like it actually turns it and actually if you like it sort of squeezes or turns the sack like so and then when you turn it back again the sack actually reverts back to its normal shape and in effect then fills the pen so the reason I wanted to show you this pen is that some people are a bit confused and they think this one is the one with the bar inside just like this Swan 1060 so even though they look very similar to the end there there's a slight difference in the feed, well the way they actually fill inside. As I say, this one has a bar inside which, which doesn't come out. This one has this pressure bar which does come out. Okay, so I thought that was quite important to show you people because I, I believe there's some confusion. Some people think these pens, just because it's got this knob to the end, that they think it's got this particular bar inside. As I said, no it doesn't, it has this pressure bar here. Now, just coming back again, once you've cleaned the nipple, uh, the sack nipple, make sure you clean all the remnants of the old sack inside. Sometimes you'll find that if you get a, um, a pick or whatever, I use this crochet needle and I just simply pick away at the old sack inside and what you'll find most of it will just simply fall out. Once you've done that, um, get your little barrel brush, which is this one that I use, and give the pen a good clean inside the barrel. Okay, I've already already done all that, so it's all ready. The whole pen's been cleaned and actually polished as well. So what we've done, we've cleaned the whole pen now, everything's clean and we're ready for a new sack. Now Again, because this one has this particular pressure bar here, um, when we actually put the section back on, it's slightly different. So, what I'm going to do at this particular point, I'm actually, let's pop a sack on the pen for you. So here's my shellac here. So we'll undo that. And, well, basically what you need to do is get a full size sack like so, pop it as far as it'll go, cut it, right at the barrel there and then what you need to do is get the what I've done is already cut one for speed and then to get the size just put the section to the front of the barrel there line up the sack like so and give it a couple of centimeters to the end here and then cut it again and what you'll have is your sack ready um, ready to put on the on the section so here's my sack spreaders here which are these tweezers so I'll just pop them in there like so again let's get our get our shell out a little bit difficult because I'm working over the camera but I'll try and there we go a nice bit of shellac there just twist it as you apply it pop your shellac to one side and get the um, your sack spreaders Whoops a daisy <laughs> don't you just love it when that happens so let's do that again let's pop that inside just and there we go just give it a slight turn make sure everything is covered inside now what we need to do is leave that to dry um, and then what I'm going to do I'm going to leave it at this particular point let it dry we'll pop back in I don't know half an hour or an hour whatever um, and then we'll put the back, pop the pen back together. Again, come back because what we need to do is show you how to put the section back in with this with this pressure bar here because it's a little bit fiddly, but again, I think it's important. So just for now, we'll let that dry and we'll be back in a moment. So I'll see you for now. Okay, so we're back again. It's been about uh, half an hour, three quarters of an hour. So hopefully, um, it should have all dried by now. Now. Another thing, before we assemble the pen, what I'd like to show you is the another reason I found this to be, well, I thought it was important to show you is that if you look at this particular section just here, you'll see it has a little sort of recess, if you like, and that recess is for for the pressure bar to sit in, like 
like so. So I'm hoping you can actually, I'm hoping you can see there. So the pressure bar in effect sits in that little recess there. So to put these these pens back together can be a little bit tricky. So again, oh, and I've just dropped all my uh, <laughs> all my dusting powder. So while it's on the uh, on the desk, what I'm going to do just simply pick up some of the dusting powder that's just dropped all over all over my desk. I'm just going to use my fingers to dust dust this sack there. Now the reason we're dusting this sack <laughs> is to make it um, well to sort of lubricate it if you like so that when we put in the pen back together um, everything will go in and it'll help with the lubrication. Now what I'm going to do now is another thing that's important inside to the bottom of the barrel here there's a slight little tube which the end of this pressure bar has to sit inside this particular tube inside the the barrel there so this little bit or this this part of it is a little bit a little bit on the tricky side actually what I forgot to do what I also do at this particular point is apply a little bit of shellac to the threads now some people may agree some people may not um, the reason I'm doing this is that once the pen goes back together, as far as I'm concerned, if everything is okay, then it shouldn't be, well, there was no need to actually open the pen up. So, right, what we need to do now is make sure the pressure bar is in the correct position, which is like so. I'm just going to present it to the top there. And again, now just I'm going to feed the barrel inside nice and slowly. Now... What I'm going to do now is just gently, let's just put a little bit of pressure on that pressure bar there. Again, this bit is a little bit, little bit fiddly. It's just coming out again. So what we'll do, let's undo it slightly. And again, there we go. I'm just turning it slightly. And as I'm turning it, I'm turning it back and forth. And in effect, what should happen is the pressure bar should find that hole inside there. And by the feel of it, what, what you'll do, you'll actually feel it. Says he. <laughs> um, what I need to do, where's my piece of rubber? No, we don't need that as yet. But it's coming undone there for a moment. So there we go. And there we go, all the way home like so. So what we've done, we've tightened all that up now. What you'll notice also what I've done is actually um, just simply put the section on without without the, the nib or the feed. Now the reason being is what I do now is get my crochet needle and use the other end there which has got a slight rounded edge. What you, what you need to do now is just pop that or a dowel inside the barrel like that and I can actually feel that there's no there's no twisting to the to the sack inside because as we're turning it back inside as we've just done there in some occasions it may catch um, and it may actually twist the sack inside so at this point because we've not put the the nib or the feed in you just simply present a dowel or whatever you want to use inside there and again I can feel that everything is fine inside. Now what I'm going to do now is just simply turn this knob here. Now by turning the knob that should actually put pressure on the bar. Now behind the camera I'm just going to put my tongue on the top there to see if I can feel any suction. So just bear with me a second. Right I don't know if you could hear that. I can feel suction so everything Everything is looking fine. What we need to do now, nice and simply, pop the feed and the nib inside. I just need to align it. A little bit difficult over the camera, but that looks fine. And present that to the pen. Slightly off a little bit. Let's pop it in slightly bit more. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is just look at get my eyepiece and make sure everything looks okay underneath yep yeah, that looks fine 
So there we do, there we go, that what we've done, we've reassembled the pen. So at this point, what I'm going to do um, is actually show you show you the nib on this particular pen because again I think it's important for this particular model what you'll see hopefully it's got a swan well it's got a large C to the top there okay a large C which tells us this is the calligraph pen um, it's a swan number two maybe Todd nib made in England let's show you a sideways view like so and there as we showed you before is the feed the feed underneath there as you can see everything is nice and clean we've already polished it and everything um, one thing I've not actually shown you in fact what I've done I've got some marks on it so just bear with me a second I've got a nice cloth here let's just give the pen a bit of a wipe there we go let's show you the to the top there you can actually hopefully see it says calligraph Okay, I'm hoping you can see that just above my finger. And then to the middle, we'll show the imprint. The imprint has got a swan. And then to the left of the swan, it's got maybe Todd and Company. And just to the right of the swan, it's actually, it's got made in England. And as we showed you before, it's got this lovely, well, this knurled knob to the bottom there, which we've shown you. A little bit earlier so there we go there's the pen fully assembled um, the size of this pen from the top of the the cap to the bottom of the barrel 126 millimeters capped around the barrel it's approximately 11 millimeters in diameter it's got this uh, gold plated trim you can see it's got these three gold bands to the bo bottom of the cap it's got this very recognizable slightly tapered um, swan clip to the top with a swan well with a swan logo just to the top there and a gold stud to the top of the cap there now while we're at it let's see if the pen actually works it's as good as time as any you've just seen me put the pen back together so what we do we dip the nib in the ink we turn the knob to the top there as far left as we can we turn it back again I don't think you can see it but I can see lots of bubbling in the ink so everything looks uh, everything looks fine let's just give the pen a wipe let's just pop that to one side and let's bring on some paper so as you can see this is the first time the pens written with since we've actually put it all back together so what we've got is a swan a calligraph we date the pen from the 1950s I believe this one well I think it's approximately 1951 the nib on this particular pen is actually an oblique oblique nib so on a downward stroke we can actually get quite a broad line on the cross stroke there we're actually getting well a fine line eight nine so let's go with the figure of eight so on the downward stroke there you can see we're getting quite a thick line whereas on the cross stroke it's quite thick so what we've got is an oblique nib on this particular pen there's the writing sample okay a lovely writer nice variation in line so there we have it that's the Swan Calligraph fountain pen. That's how we service it. That's the basics, if you like. Um, I've shown you other basics on pens, how to service them on my channel. Go and have a look at them. Um, but there's a couple of points that I've shown you on this particular pen. As I said, the, the bar inside, how to pop the sack back in and the bar. Um, and also, hopefully, just to make you a little bit wiser on the filling mechanism on this on this particular pen, because there is some slight confusion. Some people think it's got the the twist bar inside. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at the video. I hope you've learned something. Don't forget, there's loads more videos. Go and have a look. Leave a comment. Don't forget subscribe. But for now, I'll just say bye bye for now.